Good morning, friends. Steve, I am not in southern Illinois today. Uh, and uh, because of that, I thought we'd watch the sunrise together. What you're looking at is Charleston Harbor. Off in the distance is Fort Sumter, significant in American history. But this morning, it's calm. And other than the sound of the dredges in the harbor, quiet. Vivian and I were teaching English in Indonesia when a friend remarked to me that the people in the community did not think that I cared about them. That surprised me because I thought that I was there because I had a purpose, that my purpose was because I loved them and I cared about them. What was I doing that communicated disrespect and a lack of compassion? He said, it's the way you drive. You ignore the speed limit and you, you race through the community as if you're one of the gangsters. That kind of set me aback. I had never thought of the speed limit as being an expression of respect for the community. But the idea has stuck with me. And today, a few more experiences later, uh, I'm 40 years into driving the speed limit. But that self-accountability, that holding myself accountable for driving the speed limit does not mean that I like to be held accountable by others. New Zealand, unlike the United States, um, allows radar speed traps and they have them spaced sporadically across the nation there's nothing hidden about them. There are signs saying speed monitored by radar. All the GPS units or are, are, are navigation units are programmed to ding as you enter into a radar monitored speed area. But the notification comes as you are held accountable. And so after visiting our daughter in New Zealand, invariably about three months later I get a love letter from the government of New Zealand informing me that on such and such a date, at such and such a time, I committed said infraction going X number of miles over the speed limit and my penalty is a dollar amount. The first time it happened, I was befuddled. Um, the second time, I was frustrated because I had really tried to, to obey the speed limits while I was present. But for someone who is as absent-minded as me and ends up in unexpected places, um, being aware of when the speed limit changes uh, can be challenging. We're talking about measures of our temperature as Christians. How can we know if we are hot or lukewarm or cold? I've proposed that love for other people is the primary thermometer. And our unity as Christians follows out of that love. Today I want to talk about a third thermometer that I think is just as critically important and yet is abused horribly. You see, accountability, obedience, is very popular among most Christians. Popular? Well, yes. Okay? 
We don't like to be held accountable, but we like to hold everyone else accountable. It's popular. But does Jesus hold us accountable? That's a, that's a question that Christians have wrestled with over the ages. Because while well, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments, and if Paul was very assertive in saying that um, the gospel that he was preaching did not do away with the law, that we were still held accountable. At the same time, Jesus said that when we accept him, we pass from condemnation into life and that we no longer face condemnation. And Paul says it outright in Romans chapter 8, there is therefore no more condemnation for those who are in the Spirit. So which is it? Are we accountable? Or are we not accountable? Accountability took on a new meaning for me this year. Uh, my children asked me to participate in an accountability group. They are facing major challenges in their lives. My son is trying to complete his doctorate, and if he doesn't complete it by the end of the summer and defend his doctoral thesis, then he can kiss all of his efforts at education goodbye in terms of certification. My daughter lost her job this year as a language teacher and is trying to transition into her own online business, providing resources for other teachers. They have deadlines, they have objectives, they have goals. And they asked me to participate in an accountability group to keep them on track. Now, I have to admit that I was rather clueless to what this was about because, well, frankly, I have never been part of an accountability group. What do you do? turns out that once a week we get together and we talk, we share our goals and the progress we've made towards them. I thought accountability meant measuring and judging. But what I've discovered with my children is that accountability means holding up a mirror and examining ourselves closely but then supporting and encouraging each other. Now, granted, these are my children, okay, and I am their father. I'm not an authority tasked with controlling their behavior. I'm not an external, dispassionate judge meeting out punishments for infractions. And yet, the thought struck me that we as Christians describe God as our Father, but then turn around and treat others as if He is that dispassionate judge. Accountability without love. is cruel, stern, demanding. Accountability without respect is demeaning. Accountability without unity cuts people off, divides, judges people as unworthy of association. Christians love accountability. They love holding other people accountable. But is that really what our Father would call us to do? Be safe, my friends. Be prudent. But above all, Keep looking up. I hope to see you next week.